Hi, it's Pip here from QueenPipCards.com. Welcome to my tutorial on the Stamparatus. It is a amazing new tool from Stamping Up, brought to us uh, this year. And I'm going to give you a quick overview of the plates and everything about it. And then I'm going to get started and show you how to position stuff, etc. for stamping. So the first thing is that it comes with this handy little guide. Uh, so this is the English page. Everything else is in French and different languages. Uh, but then on the back, you've also got a handy sort of step-by-step -step guide as well. So you can kind of see how you're supposed to use it by looking at the guide. There are a couple of things that I do want to point out to you. So there are warnings about if you've got a um, pacemaker and also there's a warning about don't put both plates into the slots at the same time and then close them because you can break your plates. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit. No, wrong way. There we go, just so we've got a bit more space. So yeah, so don't don't put two plates in at the same time and close them. Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about the base, we're going to talk about the magnets, uh, we're going to talk about the foam mat, etc. There are going to be replacement magnets in the annual catalogue, the next annual catalogue. At the moment, you can't get replacement magnets, so they are extremely brittle, just because that's the kind of earth magnets that they are, so just be careful with that. Um, this gives you some tips about stamping with one plate and two plates and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we're going to cover all of that. So that's the that's the little handy insert. OK, so you get two plates and they come individually uh, open like this in their own little plastic wallets. I've obviously taken mine out. Um, so this is these are the two plates. They're exactly the same, interchangeable. And when you get them, you can feel that there's a grid on that's actually on one side of the of the plastic that's actually there uh, this one's flat but it makes no difference because you can see the grid through okay so you get two plates you also get one foam mat uh, it's not as thick as our pierce mat but it does exactly the same job as our pierce mat in that it helps you get a good impression when you're using photopolymer stamps and then on the base which is situated like that um, if you want it to be then here you have measurements both in imperial so inches on the outside and metric centimeters on the inside the grid lines on both this base plate and the um, plates the, the, the stamping plates uh, those grid lines are in centimeters just so that you're aware okay so this is how it comes Okay, so we've talked about the plates and how to store them, how to use them on the thing, on the um, on the base. Now let's talk about the magnets. These are at the bottom, underneath, and they're stored in these two compartments, one here and one here. When handling the magnets, you need to keep them separated at all times, um, unless you have something in between them, like a piece of cardstock. So yeah, you can have have one on here but you can hear how strong they are um, and you can put another one you know you can if you put this one here and you put this one on the back you can did you hear how fast that those like snap together and actually the further the further away you have them from each other the faster they will move together they will gather momentum as they go so the best thing really is to try and keep them separate so when I'm using them on my actual stamping stamparatus, um, it's really tricky to get them apart once they're together as well. So you need to be aware of that. I generally try and slide them. So slide them. Try and slide them apart. So when they're together, try and just slide them apart. <laughs> and of course, they now don't want to play. But as you can see, they are extremely strong magnets. And if you do get them not not playing ball, then you will need some strength to get them apart. So what I try and do is I try and keep them keep them away from each other as much as you can. So put them back into the um, into the base. And when you're using a piece of cardstock, if you're not using it 
up at the corners. So say you needed to do something because you wanted to work around the edge, so you wanted to stamp off onto the onto you know you wanted an image that was going to stamp off the edge of the cardstock. First of all, I recommend you chopping up a piece of grid paper <laughs> and putting that underneath because you don't want to be getting ink onto your um, onto your actual stamparatus base because then you know you can get lead, leads to smudging and all that kind of stuff so you want to be careful with that but secondly if you're if you're using your magnets place them down carefully at the edges and keep them away from each other so keep them here and slide and they can go onto the cardstock you know like that and that will keep the cardstock nice and firm in place so you can stamp and come off and stamp and come off uh, you can use them through the, the foam you know if you had what should we call it the photopolymer stamps then what you would do is you would put your foam piece down and this is also where it can be helpful to have a piece of grid paper oh there we go very strong tonight i don't know if the i don't think it makes a blind bit of difference what what's going on with the weather but you never know but obviously for photopolymer again you'd want to put down some grid paper because the foam will get inky a bit like your pierce mat does and again the magnets are strong enough to work through the foam that's how strong they are so then you would just stamp as normal and what happens is that when your stamp pad comes over on here see it never really gets as far down as the as the magnets so your stamps will just work you know perfectly normally off the edges. When you're putting them away, always work with one magnet first, slide one magnet off, turn it over, put it back in place, then slide the other one off because then there's no chance that you're going to uh, accidentally put the magnets next to each other. Uh, if they break, stamping up will not uh, replace them because they are seen to be that's a known hazard of these magnets however I can tell you that there will be replacement magnets that you can purchase in the main catalogue so um, you know it's not all bad news and to do some very very simple basic stamping you will take a piece of cardstock and you will place it into your base you will then take a stamp I'm going to be using this stamp and you'll work out where you want it to sit on your on your card so I might have it here I think I'm going to have it here and then I'll put the sentiment up there you're going to then position your plates now you can't put your plates in they won't go down if you try and put them in flat you have to have them vertical when they're vertical they slot into place which is good because it means when they're here they're not ever going to slide out so you plop, slot them into place, just plot them, slot them into place, press down so that they pick up your, your stamp. I'll just move this along so you can see. And once your stamp is then in place, then you can start inking that up and stamping your stamp. So I am using soft, uh, no, early espresso I wanted to use for this one, for my little hedgehog. I'm using Early Espresso for my little hedgehog here. I'm just going to ink it. And now you see you ink straight onto this. Now, this does mean that you're pushing this plate down. So if you find that you, it's flexing and you're not getting a good um, you're not getting a good contact with your ink pad, you can put something like uh, your pierce mat or uh, stamp stamp set or something underneath it but you can see that you can get a good impression with that when you can now see whether that's inked up or not i think it is this is a i might need to re-ink my my ink pad here we go all right so i'm going to make sure that it's in the corners here uh, and this i'm not even using the magnets i'm just using the corners to line it up and then I'm going to press firmly down. And the thing is, you can't really get any rocking with this, which is, of course, why it's such a great tool. And then when you lift it back up, you have your little hedgehog. 
and if it's not exactly how you wanted it to be then you could always um, adjust it and re-ink uh, re and stamp again on another piece of cardstock but I'm happy with that I like him uh, I'm going to use him again in a, in a moment so I'm going to take him out because the the blessings of this is that I can do so take him out and put another stamp um, another plate in stamping plate and this time I'm going to get my sentiments and which one shall I use? Today is special, just like you're sending hedgehogs your way. I think that has to be it. Sending hedgehogs your way. So don't forget when you get your new stamps to take this this bit off the back. I always get people saying, I can't stamp, I can't stick it down. <laughs> you haven't actually taken that off. Uh, now you're going to position this. And this is where it may get, you might want to see where it's actually going to stamp. Okay, so if you want to see how your words are going to line up, I put another piece of cardstock in just over the top of it and I roughly work out where I want it to be and then I press it down and then I ink it up. Make sure I've got good coverage and then I can stamp. You could do it with a bit of grid paper as well. Uh, I'm quite happy with that actually that looks like it's come out it's going to come out nice it looks straight to the lines yeah pretty straight yeah I'm good with that so just use a piece of scrap paper so that you get your alignment right and you can fiddle around and move your stamp around uh, and then go back down and do the one you really want to do and notice how I have got a little bit of ink all around the edges here but no ink is coming off on my actual piece of cardstock so that's how you would do that, change the words out and the sentiment using the two um, plates. Now, the only thing is that we don't have anything yet that's easy to clean our stamper, uh, stamparatus with. However, I'm hoping that they're going to come out with something at some point. So I chop up, chopped up ages ago, I chopped up a, when I got it, I chopped up a piece of um, an old, oops, sorry. <laughs> that flew off the top of something that's in my crafting tote next to me. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I just chopped I chopped, chopped one of these in half, one of the old ones, so that I can now just take my scrub. But you can use, um, uh, what are they called, wet wipes. You can use um, a chamois that you've got, um, you know, covered in spritz in stamping mist etc uh, and then you basically you're ready to go take those off and put those away and you're ready to go again so that's how you do the basic uh, stamping with the stamper jig and red rubber uh, next up let's show you how to use the foam pad and the photopoly photopolymer stamps okay so photopolymer stamps i'm using the uh picture perfect birthday stamp set and I want to use this big, uh, big stamp here. Happiest birthday to you. Now, another thing you can do with photopolymer, which is cool, is that you can now, because you can see through them, you can now line up your stamp onto the grid. So as long as the as long as the words are lined up with the flat, with the edges of you can't see that with the edges of the grid line, which they are then you know that's going to come out straight which I think is an excellent tip uh, and a great tool for us to have so this time I'm stamping it this way because I'm actually going to turn this into a tag so is that big enough yeah no, actually I'll do it this way there we go go straight in the middle that's fine so what you want to make sure is that you want to make sure you've got your foam pad that goes inside now that means that you can't see your grid lines which again that's why I use my corners um, just so that I know where it's going and then you can use this I'm going to use some berry burst I can find my berry burst there we go so this is going to get pink and again you can stamp it up if you're not sure if it's covered you can just tilt it and you then you can start to see whether it's it's actually wet in all areas that looks fine to me so now I'm going to go straight over 
and I'm going to stamp. Now, did you notice that I didn't stamp all the way down um, on this side and it's left this side a bit wishy-washy? And also there's something stuck to my Y, which is always annoying. So I'm going to take that off. But the brilliant thing about the Stamparatus is that because you're not moving anything, you're literally just going to go back over you can cover up the Y and get that H back again and it's in exactly the same place. Ooh. There we go. So now I've managed to go exactly back on. No different, no messing, uh, no shadows, no whatever. Now obviously because it had ink on it already, it's still going to be lighter on the H unless I just go and literally just ink up the H and go back in and just do the H. And I must have moved it. Bugger. Okay, so now I'm going to ink this up in Berry Burst, make sure it's well covered. No bits. Okay, and then we're going to go back over. And you can see now I've actually caught the ink pad with that, but don't worry. Now remember photopolymer, you need to leave it for a bit. It's not that you're pushing down so much as you're just, I'm just making sure it's got um, contact with the paper just so that it sinks in. There we go. And I've got a nice ombre effect going on there because I think my pad needs re-inking in the middle by the looks of it or it's re-inked in the middle and not around the edges so let's see if we can't match those up let's give that a go how's that doing oh that's better there we go no shadow no double inking just straight back, straight in the same place, and now that's inked in both places. Um, so that's that's looking good. So then, if I wanted to, I could make ten cards, you know, the same, just inking, restamping, inking, restamping. It's always going to hit on the same spot. Uh, but that's how you use it with photopolymer. So photopolymer, you use your mat with your stamping, and then with your red rubber, you just you just use it as it is. Okay, so that's the uh, basics of how to stamp with the stamp -a jig both with the red rubber and the photopolymer. And then I am going to do a series of a few tutorials for you, uh, just showing you how to do a few different things with the with the with the. I did call it a stamp -a jig <gasps> That's terrible with the stamparatus. <laughs> So this is how you use the Stamparatus, not the Stampamajig. I apologise. I'm so used to the Stampamajig. I'm, I'm going to have to get out of that habit. So yeah, so come back and I'll have a few tutorials for you um, on how to use the um, how to use the stamps and make some pretty cards. Alrighty, thank you. Bye.